Today, we review seven of the highest dividend producing aristocrat stocks, as well as a cool bonus at the end. And we will begin right now. It is not a surprise that I am a huge fan of Canada's aristocrats. And these are the dividend stocks that have proven themselves with consistent dividend increases for at least five years or more. This is an elite list of dividend stocks that only numbers 93 in total at the time of recording. The list does change from time to time as some companies are removed and some are added. In Canada, to get on this list, you need a market cap of at least $300 million. You need to have increased your dividends for the last five Five consecutive years, you need to be listed on the TSX and you need to be a member of the S&P Canada BMI. 93 stocks have done just that. Before we get our royal on, let me know in the comments if you have any aristocrats in your portfolio. I have quite a few. As always, I am very grateful to see you all here in the home of free financial content on YouTube. If you are new, please subscribe right now so you won't miss a single moment and a huge thank you for that click. I am really excited to jump right into these aristocrats. So today's list contains aristocrats who have dividend yields above 6% at the time of recording. As usual, these yields can vary with market conditions and they will be lower in better times. But yields are not about the future, they are about the return you are getting at the time of purchase. I also mentioned there was a bonus at the end of the video, so you totally need to stick around for that. Kicking off our list today, we have Great West Life Co. with a ticker of GWO. They are based out of Winnipeg and they are one of Canada's big three life insurance firms. They provide insurance in Canada, the US and Europe, so they have a very solid customer base. They have a market cap of $28.9 billion and a beta of 0.81, making them much less volatile than the market average. Their earnings per share clock in at 3.38, while their price to earnings ratio is 9.10. As for their dividends, their yield comes in at 6.319%, which is paid out quarterly in the amount of 49 cents per share. Let's look at their growth. In 2021, they saw a return on investment of 30.28%, which is, well, yeah, it's very nice. If you add in the dividends, we have a total return of 36.60%. However, in 2022 thus far, they have suffered the bear market a wee bit and are showing an ROI so far of negative 19.07%. Despite the negative ROI, Great West Life is a good blue chip insurance company that will have no issues getting back to the glory days and becoming a good investment. Coming in at number six, we have a stock that really needs no introduction. Enbridge with the ticker of ENB is one of Canada's blue chip oil companies with a very good dividend and a history of raising it. They are based out of Calgary and they are front and center when it comes to pipelines, though they also have their fingers into natural gas and renewable energy. They have a market cap of $110 billion and a beta of 0.90, which brings a lot of stability with their share price. Their earnings per share clock in at 2.41, while their price to earnings ratio is 22.40. We are here for the dividends and their dividend yield comes in at 6.334%, which is paid out quarterly in the amount of 86 cents per share. They may be in near the bottom of our list today, but they are near the top in regard to growth. In 2021, they saw a return of investment of 21.88%, which is very solid. Adding in the dividends, we have a total return of 28.21%. Now, in 2022, thus far, they have weathered the bear market well and are showing an ROI of 9.67%. Enbridge is simply a solid long-term investment choice with some pretty good dividends to boot. I know in the comments, someone will bring up ENS and they are another way to invest in Enbridge with a split core stock that has a little higher risk and higher dividends to reward you for taking the higher risk. At number five, we have First National Financial Corporation with a ticker of FN. Their headquarters is in Vaughan, Ontario, and they are mortgage underwriters, and the fund primarily is exposed to commercial mortgages. They have a market cap of $2.20 billion and a beta of 1.24, which is just a little more volatile than the market average. Their earnings per share comes in at 3.36, while their PE ratio is 10.90. 
Their dividend yield comes in at 6.408%, which is paid out monthly in the amount of 19.6 cents per share. Turning to growth, in 2021, they saw a return on investment of 3.23%, which is not super great, but deceptive as they peaked early in the year and fell early into that bear market. If you add in the dividends, it is a little better as we have a total return of 9.64%. Now in 2022, they have an ROI of negative 12.42%. First National is a solid company and they will weather the bear market and recover on the other side. Short term though, they would strictly be a dividend play with long-term growth potential. There are two REITs in today's list and this is the first of them. In our fourth spot, we have Smart Center's REIT with a ticker of SRU. UN. Their headquarters are in Vaughan, Ontario, and they are a fully integrated commercial and residential REIT with roughly 174 properties from coast to coast. They have a market cap of $4.02 billion and a beta of 1.21, which is slightly more volatile than the market average. Their earnings per share comes in at 6.46, while their PE ratio is 4.30. Their dividend yield comes in at 6.657%, which is paid out monthly in the amount of 19.6 cents per share. Let's turn to growth. In 2021, they saw a return on investment of 41.83%. Holy banana! And a bread. If you add in the dividends, we have a total return of 48.49%. That is absolutely not too shabby at all. In 2022, they have an ROI of negative 13.90, which is really not bad considering their huge growth before the bear market. Smart Centers is one of those REITs you can feel good about holding. I have no concerns at all with them, and I do have them in my RRSP. Let's keep this list rocking as we jump into number three, which is Acon Group with a ticker of A-R-E. They are based out of Hamilton and they are in both the construction and concession industries. However, most of their revenue does come from construction in both the public and private sectors. They have a market cap of $648 million and a beta of 0.91, which is slightly less volatile than the market average. Their earnings per share clocks in at 0.45, while their P.E. ratio is 23.50. Their dividend yield comes in at 6.961%, which is paid out quarterly in the amount of 18.5 cents per share. In terms of growth, in 2021, they saw an ROI of 5.63%, adding in the dividend we have a total return of 12.59%. In 2022, they have an ROI of negative 36.38%, which is a little steep for sure. Part of that may very well be due to worker shortages hitting the construction industry exceptionally hard. Acon will recover on the other side, but I do say that with less certainty than I would like to. This is one I would be a wee bit wary about, especially when their current drop has dropped them into a, yeah, a 10 year low. In at our second spot, we have the other REIT and it is Slate Grocery REIT with a ticker of SGR.UN. They are based out of Toronto and they are mostly invested in grocery related real estate in the United States. They have a market cap of $619 million and a beta of 1.48, which is a little more volatile than the market average. Their earnings per share comes in at 2.25 while their PE ratio is 6.40. Their dividend yield comes in at 8.14 3%, which is paid out monthly in the amount of 7.2 cents USD per share. So there will be a currency conversion for this one. In terms of growth, in 2021, they saw an ROI of 30.80%. Very nice. If you add in the dividends, we have a total return of 38.94%. In 2022, they have an ROI of negative 3.13%, which is absolutely great. I know Slate is a community favorite, and for a good reason. This is a fantastic read, and I do hold them. Coming in at our top spot is Fira Capital with a ticket of FSZ or FSZ. They are based out of Montreal and they are an investment firm that provides multiple investment strategies for clients in Canada, the US, as well as Europe. They have a market cap of $754 million and a beta of 1.49, which is also a little more volatile than the market average. Their earnings per share comes in at 0.50, while their PE ratio is 18. 
0.00. Their dividend yield comes in at 9.492%, which is paid out quarterly in the amount of 21.5 cents per share. This is this is a nice dividend for sure. In terms of growth, in 2021, they saw an ROI of negative 1.95%, making their total return 7.54%. This year, in 2022, they have an ROI thus far of negative 14.04%. They will, without a doubt, recover to where they have been. However, this one is really not about growth at all. They are 100% a dividend play. If passive income is all you are after, this is a stock for you. These are some great stocks, and I am sure many of you will be getting your due diligence on for one or maybe even a few of them. Dividend aristocrats are great, and it is a shame that there are so many to choose from. It sounds like we need an ETF for the S&P TSX dividend aristocrats. And it just so happens that BlackRock has the iShares S&P TSX Canadian Dividend Aristocrats Index ETF. The ticker for that one is CDZ or CDZ, and they have a management fee of 0.60%. This is not a dividend play as the ETF has a smaller yield of 3.297% that is paid out monthly in the amount of 9.5 cents per share. However, they are more of a growth play with an ROI in 2021 of 22.83%. Of course, adding in the dividend, we have a total return of 26.13%. They have fallen this year in the bear market with an ROI of negative 6.56. That is not, well, it's not very bad, to be honest. I do like this ETF, and I do have it in my RRSP, as I think it has lots of room for growth and some passive income to boot. The fun does not have to end here, because you can always watch my video on Enbridge that I have linked on the left, or you can check out the video on the right that that YouTube thinks you will like. Your click will decide who is right and I will see you in the next video.